the belt collection. So no, I used to like going out and really decking out in a costume. Brooke and aspiring DJ Jamie hold down regular jobs. They moved from the coast to experience life in the big city. So as long as I'm comfy in pants and sneakers. Brooke's first experience with ecstasy was at her first dance party. I was just about to turn 18 with a group of other friends who had tried it before. Um, so they very strongly held my hand the whole time through it. Um, I've never, it's, it's never something that I'll take for granted. It's always something that I know that there's huge danger in taking and there's also a huge element of fun in taking it as well. But it's something that um, I'm a pretty level-headed person um, anyway. So it's something that I'm very precautious of taking and it's not something that we take um, every weekend. It's not something that we necessarily need to take to yeah. go out. <laughs> They're likely to be relatively well educated, so almost all ecstasy users have done at least year 12 or are currently completing their school studies. They're likely to be employed or engaged in full-time studies. They've got very little contact with social authorities, so compared to, say, a heroin user, they're not showing up for treatment, they're not being arrested and showing up in court, they're not going to hospital, they're not showing up in the morgue, so it's quite a different sort of uh, group to your typical stereotype drug user in that they're relatively well functioning basically you'd have to be honest and say they're normal people they're your brother or your son or your cousin they're people that you know according to those close to her Samantha Jean Kidney's last three months have been a living hell last October she supplied ecstasy to Anna Wood and two others at a North Shore dance party in 1995, teenager Anna Wood died at a dance party. It was the first ecstasy-related death to make the headlines in Australia. Anna died because she drank too much water, which caused her brain to swell. The message is strong and clear that ecstasy can kill. It's rare, but it can, and it has to be treated with a great deal of caution. Her mother began a public campaign against the drug. Anna's death highlighted an important lesson. Kids should never be too afraid to call an ambulance if a friend is in trouble. The ensuing publicity branded the dance scene as a dangerous subculture. But inside the dance scene, kids were unimpressed by the demonization of the drug. With what the media is saying, it's more like don't take ecstasy, it can kill you. It gives it a negative, I mean, it's a drug in that it's illegal and that's as far as it goes, but it's misinformation, it's, it's not, they're not exactly telling the truth. There's a lot of people that go out there and try drugs and say, well, I've tried it and I didn't die, so what happens now? In their search for information about the drug, the internet has become the place for ecstasy users to go. I didn't want to go jumping into trying ecstasy without researching what it's going to do to my body, what negative effects it's going to have. So I went on the internet. There's a site called Eroid and there's a site called Blue Light as well, web community of ravers, or people that take ecstasy. And um, I researched that and found out what, what it was gonna do, and that's how I made my decision to take it, was from the information that was on the internet. As an educator, I, I think this is one of the greatest problems that we have. How do we get across messages about long-term effects of ecstasy? We just simply don't know. Lots of research is being conducted looking at um, uh, long-term users and trying to identify trends. Out here we are stoned. Death from ecstasy can happen, but is very rare. Stoned. Nevertheless, the jury is still out on what other damage ecstasy can cause. Recent research shows that long-term use might damage the nerve fibres, which release serotonin to the brain. Psychologist Brendan Boot has collected the latest data. The serotonin is a very important uh, chemical in the brain. It's involved in the regulation of mood, cognitive processes, learning and memory, and quite a few housekeeping functions, things like maintaining body temperature, uh, sleep and wake cycles, appetite, and, and many, quite a few different things. And so if you damage this system, then you are more likely to suffer a few 
problems, particularly things like uh, depression. You'll be more prone to depression, uh, and you'll also be more prone to uh, having difficulties with memory. <laughs> When I first tried it, I went out a few times, you know, maybe once every few weeks, and um, it sort of got a bit too much. If you go out on a Friday night, come Monday, you feel a little down, a little depressed. And a lot of my friends as well decided to go out a lot more. They go out every weekend and maybe take ecstasy, you know, four or five times on the weekend. And seeing them the next week, depressed and not quite with it, was really an eye opener to say, Pete, you know, they're abusing the drug rather than enjoying it. So if I'm going to take ecstasy now, I'll, I'll take it maybe once a month. I guess it comes down to individuals. I, I know certain individuals who aren't responsible on drugs, but they're mm. not responsible on any sort of drug, legal yeah. or illegal. So, <laughs> yeah, so it's um, not just there's the, a good reason why this generation is sometimes nicknamed the chemical it, generation. Yeah. It would be a mistake to assume well, that this is a group uh, which automatically pops pills of dubious okay. quality. People just don't realise that there are ways to look after yourself, that it doesn't have to be so dangerous. There are dangers involved, but there's dangers involved with anything and with all drugs as well, including the legal ones. How do you minimise the harm to yourself? Uh, well, there's a few different ways. Back when I first started going out, I'd just, uh, well, I'd listen to what other people had said about the pill that I was going to take. But these days, there's testers. Well, under Australian law, um, the circumstances could in inform the idea of possession. We could not plead ignorance as to not knowing what was in the pill. So it's in our best interest to let the um, punter do all the handling themselves. John Davidson is a spokesman for Enlighten, a self-funded harm minimisation group which tests pills at dance events. They use kits which are legal in Australia and are easily obtainable. Here, John is testing a placebo. So we asked the person to um, show us the pill so we could write down what, what the logo is, measure it, that sort of thing. We scrape off two tiny bits onto a ceramic plate like this. And we only need that small amount. Then we take the testing liquids. First we use the E1, the first one, the marquee reagent. Ecstasy is mainly manufactured in Europe. Australian made pills rarely contain true MDMA, more likely amphetamines or a dangerous adulterant. Now, if this contained ecstasy, that liquid would have gone purple. Um, and actually, both liquids would have gone purple. If it contained amphetamine, this one would have gone orange. If it contained ketamine, this one would have gone an orange-brown as well. A lot of Australian pills contain amphetamine, which by itself is dangerous, but you know, not overly dangerous. But ketamine is a, a common adulterant in pills. And this is an anaesthetic and a dissociative anaesthetic, which can lead people to, to freak out and have bad times. But there's some more dangerous substances like PMA, which have been around in Australia for about 10 years now. This is a copycat version of ecstasy, and it's a, quite a dangerous amphetamine, as um, the lethal dosage is probably in about four or five pills. Now, people have about 10 people have died in Australia over the last 10 years. And this is one thing that we can identify with tests. And it's our hope that if we identify this at a, at a rave or an event, we would be able to get the word out and let people know that these pills are bad. If the pill contains ecstasy, it will give a purple or black result. If it contains speed or a speed-like substance, it will give an orange result. John independently filmed this test at a dance party. This time, the pills were real. The results show that the pill contained MDMA, the active ingredient in ecstasy. You would be quite willing, on the basis of the result, to decide not to take the pill or to take it? Well, definitely, if I get a bad reaction, something which shows that either there could be anything in the pill or there's speed or DXM or PMA or something which I wouldn't want to take, I definitely wouldn't take the pill.